You have found Authentic Business Adventures, the business program that brings you the struggles, stories, and triumphant successes of business owners across the land. Past episodes of the Authentic Business Adventures program can be found on the podcast link at drawitincustomers.com. We are coming to you from the Sun Prairie Community Radio Studios, underwritten by Bank of Sun Prairie. My name is James Kateman, business coach at Draw In Customers Business Coaching, co-owner of Calls on Call Shared Reception of Services, and author of the Bold Business Book, available on Amazon. Today, we're welcoming slash preparing to learn from Ian Ailey, coordinator at the Market Ready Program. Ian, how's it feeling today? It's good. Yeah, glad to be here. Thanks awesome. for the opportunity. Well, thanks for coming here. Let's start off and you tell us, what is the Market Ready Program? Great, yeah. So the Market Ready Program is connected with the Madison Public Market, which is going to be over on East Washington Avenue, right mm-hmm. at First Street. So right okay. where the Yahara connects the rivers. Sure. So there's a, a small business development program that mm-hmm. works with multicultural business owners. Mm-hmm. So we've got a group of 30 different business owners that are participating in this program, um, getting coaching sure. from folks like yourself. Right, right. Uh, we've also got uh, some small grants. Mm-hmm. We have support with education and technical assistance. Nice. And a lot of just peer-to-peer support between the, between the business owners. Very cool. Very cool. Now, you said there's 30 members. And is it expected that all 30 of those will make it into the market itself? Right. So the plan with this program is to prepare people to be in the market. So mm-hmm. we've got some folks that are brand new, you know, uh, just had an idea when they came into the program. We've got other folks that have been doing this for five years, wanting to expand their business. Gotcha. And so we're hoping to essentially get the all 30 folks ready, ready to go so mm-hmm. that when the market actually is, is open, they, they have a really good chance to, sure. to get in there. So, so it's not, no one's guaranteed in yet. Mm-hmm. There's going to be uh, uh, the market manager is mm-hmm. yet to be hired and we want to make sure that okay. that person's in place mm-hmm. before the selection happens um, it's kind of like you wouldn't want to um, get all your ingredients together before you had your chef to bake your cake sure. or your sure. baseball team you want to make sure you got your your players selected from sure. the actual coaching staff so. gotcha <laughs> so now you have i'm just trying to think now with the madison market you guys are essentially independent of the madison market you're more or less preparing some businesses for that, if I understand correctly. Is that right? Correct. So okay. I, I work for the Northside Planning Council, which is gotcha. based on the north side of Madison. Mm-hmm. And we run a program called the Feed Kitchen, mm-hmm. which is a business incubator. So mm-hmm. we've got a whole bunch of different businesses that all operate out of the same space. You know, mm-hmm. they're sharing equipment, um, you know, offering advice to one another, all these things. Sure. Um, so we kind of had a background. Northside already had a background in this sort of, you know, entrepreneurship mm-hmm. support and so when it came time to actually start up the Market Ready program, we applied to uh, sort of manage that program. And sure. So I, so I officially work for the Northside Planning Council, mm-hmm. and then we receive our funding from the city of Madison. So gotcha. So we work really closely with the city. They're a really close partner in the process. Okay. That's awesome. I think of all the business owners that I know that do work in the feed kitchens, it's crazy. I just wondered, because feed k- kitchen is not that old, right? Right, yeah, it's not it's not that old at all. Um, but We're talking it's, ten years, maybe thereabouts, something like that. Yeah. So I think all the businesses that you guys help over there, what would happen to those businesses if you guys didn't exist, or would they even be able to get off the ground? It's crazy. Completely. I mean, that's the thing. Rather than having to go out and buy all this specialized equipment yourself and mm-hmm. duplicate that across, you know, mm-hmm. a bunch of different kitchens. Sure. You're able to rent by the hour and have access. We've got. Just crazy equipment. We've got this uh, tilt skillet where you can make soup or sauce and sure. just massive batches and then tilt it up and oh, put nice. it into into jars, do whatever you want. Sure. We've got a whole room that bakes. Like you can essentially, oh, wow. you know, take a cart, fill it up with cookies ready to bake, roll it into the room, bake the whole room. It's just bonkers. <laughs> That's you awesome. Know? So, All right. Yeah. <laughs> nice. And, and, you know, members of the public can come and rent the space as well. It's, it's, uh, we have, a lot of different rates for folks you know folks Mm -hmm. that are coming there baking baking or cooking all the time sure there are some rates for folks and then if you want to just come in you know you've got a big garden Mm -hmm. you wanted to process your uh your tomatoes and really use equipment that can make it go quick Mm -hmm. you can come and just rent it by the hour and that's i didn't know that that's awesome yeah all right or you got christmas cookies you got to make by the million (laughs) yep (laughs) my my wife and i we got married in october and we we grow a lot of fruit and Mm -hmm. so we made jam and made it at the feed kitchen and rather than taking you know a whole day it took a few hours because you can can hundreds of jars at the same time well that's crazy pretty cool super awesome yep awesome so tell me about the the market ready program what kind of businesses are in the market ready program 
yeah, so it's a lot of food businesses, but it's a it's a mix. You know, we have um, we have some folks that are doing uh, arts and crafts. Mm-hmm. Um, we have people that are doing you know earrings and jewelry. Sure. But we also have a lot of people that that we have um, a couple people that are doing clothing, um, body care products. We have somebody's doing natural body care products like soaps and things okay. like that. Okay. Sure. Um, and then we have a lot of food. So, mm-hmm. like I said, it's a very multicultural group, and so we have people that are making Tibetan food, Mexican food from a lot of different parts of Mexico. Oh, wow. um, we have uh, we have Nigerian Caribbean food. Mm-hmm. Um, we have Hmong food. Um, just Vietnamese, all all sorts of different places sure. across the world. So it's it's a really uh, it's going to be a vibrant, vibrant uh, market. It's going to be pretty cool. That's to, awesome. And what's interesting to think about with this market is it's not like a farmer's market where it's just, uh, you know, sort of pops up in a, in a parking lot or whatever. Sure. This is going to be an indoor space that's operating every day of the week, and it's going to have a lot of things happening in it. So they're going to be, you know, um, all the sort of permanent stalls, but there's mm-hmm. also going to be events and programs and, sure. um, you know, uh, things for kids, all, all sorts of stuff happening mm-hmm. in that space. So why don't you tell us a little bit about the market itself? Because in the end, that's what the main foundation of what's going on here. The market itself is a building. I mean, can you just tell us about what all is going on there? Absolutely, yeah. So the the space is going to be, right now, there's a strip mall in that space. Mm-hmm. So it has a green awning. It's just um, right at right at first in East Wash. Sure. And so that space is owned by uh, a private private uh, person sure they're going to sell a portion of that to the city of madison um, okay. and they're going to build this market hall so mm-hmm. that's going to be a retail space for um really locally produced items so okay a lot of food but also you know if somebody's producing locally uh locally produced furniture mm-hmm. what something like that that would be welcome in this space sure um, really trying to celebrate the the many cultures of madison really so sort of what what it is to be from this this area sure um and uh then the plan is actually over over time to create a whole district or a whole okay. market district where you've got shipping and processing and other things happening in right. other buildings surrounding that. So okay. the city actually owns the land adjacent to this property. Sure. Um, and that's where the fleet service building is. Oh, right sure, now. sure. So, so that building is slated to get, you know, fleet services will move. Okay. And the plan is to actually have that be sort of the second space for the market that would be... Taking over that existing fleet services building or so tearing that, it down and... Uh, probably retrofitting the existing building okay. and using that as a space for processing, shipping, and other sure. kind of support services to okay. that retail space. Okay. Um, so if somebody you know is making a sauce or making um, something else that needed a space for production, this mm-hmm. could be a, a space to scale up that production. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. So tell me about a timeline in regards to tearing down this strip mall thing and yeah. putting up the market itself, the building there and all that jazz. Yeah, well, it's, it's coming soon. So the market, you know, it's been talked about for a lot of years, but mm-hmm. we're actually getting getting to the point where it's actually, we're close. So sure. the market is going to, the construction starts next year, 2019, mm-hmm. and it will open in 2020. So okay. probably near the end of 2020, it's kind of like fall of 19 would be roughly when the sure. construction begins. Okay. And then fall of 2020 is when it should open. Mm-hmm. So pretty soon you should start to see sure. uh, backhoes and all the things. You That's know? interesting. So, <laughs> so that change, what will change or if anything, on East Washington and First Avenue there. Yeah, well, so, um, you know... Traffic-wise or road-wise? Traffic-wise, wise or yeah, road-wise. So, you know, it's it's uh, something that the city's traffic engineers are definitely thinking about in terms mm-hmm. of that, that flow, how to get, um, sure. you know, semi-trucks in there to bring in supplies right. and all that sort of, sort of thing. So they are going to um, create, create some internal roads to that space too and think okay. through the the flow just to make sure that east gotcha. wash continues to move mm-hmm. and also that it's a safe safe place to to walk to to bike to sure to, and do all these other things sure um and you know the the vision for this market is uh is to have it be not just for that neighborhood you know to mm-hmm. really service like the the whole the whole county the whole mm-hmm. state you know and and so to you know, just to roll in from some some prairie down mm-hmm. East Wash to, mm-hmm. to get to the market. That's something that we really are envisioning is having it be sure. a place for, you know, if you've got family in town, mm-hmm. bring them hanging out for the hanging out for the day at the market. That's you know, it's the, interesting you say that because I was just in Omaha this past weekend, right? And we went to the zoo, which is fantastic zoo, super huge. But we were asking the people that were visiting, like, hey, what what do people do when they come here, right? The top of my mind is Berkshire Hathaway. Like, what do you do? You do something there? Like, no, it's just an office. Like what do you what do you do here? And they really didn't have anything, which was bizarre. And I thought, well, with Madison, you got 
there's this laundry list of stuff that you can do, right? The State Street, Capitol, and all these other locations, depending upon if you have kids or grown-ups, whatever. And to, so to have another place that you can either come and take tours or someplace that you can come routinely. Completely. It's fantastic, right? Absolutely. I was in Philadelphia a couple of years ago, and I was at their market. Mm-hmm. And I had never heard of that, but I had a, we had a friend of a friend that we met down there. She lives down there. And she took us to this market. We ended up going there every single day because there's so much stuff in that market, right? It's like, you want food? Sure, we got food. You want donuts? Yeah, great. Okay, you want a shirt that says, you know, hey, Philadelphia or something like that? They got that. Yeah. And it's so much stuff packed in that space. And it was interesting to see just people coming and going out of that space. It was fantastic. Yeah, yeah, that's that's the hope, you know, to have this be really a just a, a fun place to come hang out mm-hmm. for a lot of reasons you know mm-hmm. come come get that donut come get that like you know maybe there's gonna be music there yeah. during the afternoon yep. and then you know all sorts of different things so yeah it was interesting because they had i remember we got this there was an amish donut place or something like that where they had the whole you could watch them making it and it was an event they had some breakfast place that i couldn't tell you what it was but it was magical just watching them from uh like they had a counter so you could sit at but it's very tight space so you could watch the people coming and going and watch them make the food, eggs, pancakes, all that jazz. And it was just fun to watch. From It was almost like a beehive you're watching, right? The little dance. Completely. Then they had this ice cream place. And it's like, we've been selling ice cream here for a million years or something like that. So they were super fancy. And that, I guess I really got a sense of community there. And it was almost organized chaos in that regard. Completely. So it was fantastic. Well, and that's, that's the nice thing about that is, is, you know, you come for one thing, mm-hmm. but then you end up staying for another thing. Cause it's like, Oh, I didn't realize sure. that there was music today. Or I didn't mm-hmm. realize that this vendor just started up, you know? It, it, yeah. So that, that's, that's the hope is to, you know, have many different things going on so that, uh, you can, you know, bump into something new and be like, oh, right, yeah. great. Or bump into a neighbor or bump in, you know, and that's, yeah. that's the idea. It seemed so. like a mall with much less space. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so everybody had to be very, I guess there are some of the spaces I bet weren't even 10 by 10. Yeah. That people had. And you were, I don't even know if you had four feet between the aisles. So it was, well, maybe four or five feet, something like that. It was tight. It yeah. seemed tight. For all I know, it was 20 feet. Completely. But there were so many people there, it felt like four feet. Well, and the, the cool thing is, you know, in contrast to a mall, is that this is sort of all about local business, right? Mm-hmm. So so it's like, rather than being Old Navy, you've sure. got somebody who's producing uh, producing something uh, themselves, and then they're maybe even sourcing their ingredients from uh, oh, sure. from another, mm-hmm. another local business as well. Mm-hmm. So, you know, we've got folks in our program who... Uh, they're you know sourcing almost in all of their their food ingredients mm-hmm. from uh, you know we have one person who makes Mexican food and her brother grows all of the vegetables that she uses oh, um, wow. organically just out in Verona okay um, and we have another person who makes Tibetan food in similar situation um, she she gets all of her produce from another family member so it's oh, wow. it's pretty cool that way nice yeah that's awesome so that means going back to the the market ready program that you're gathering some business owners or potential business owners that they're just starting out yep. that are interested in being a part of this market, which means that they'll have a space there. Is that right? Yeah. So, so, you know, uh, everybody's, everybody's looking to, to get a spot in the market mm-hmm. and, and what we're doing is we're sort of giving them additional support, you know, okay. so that then they're, when the market's actually at the point where they're selecting mm-hmm. vendors mm-hmm. that they will have, uh, you know, just like a really good shot at it. Sure. Sure. That's nice. So let's go and shift and talk about the people that are actually part of the Market Ready program. Great. So can you give us an outline and then maybe some examples? Yeah, for sure. So, you know, this uh, this business development program, we really wanted to make sure that the benefits of the market were going to uh, be felt by all of all of Madison's mm-hmm. sort of diverse communities. And so when it came time for us to actually look for people to participate in the program, we worked with a lot of a lot of uh, organizations, um, our partners that already have relationships in across the, across the city and across the okay. communities. And so, sure, you know, we worked with uh, the Chambers of Commerce, we worked with the Black Chamber of Commerce, the Hmong Chamber of Commerce. We worked with Centro Espano. Uh, we, you know, really really connected with a lot of different groups. Sure, and um, we were looking for thirty different businesses, and we ended up having uh, almost ninety applications, which is wow. which is great. You know, so holy cow, okay. yeah, and uh, we have an advisory group that is composed of all those different partners that helped mm-hmm. us select those businesses, and so. Um, in the end, it's about uh, two thirds of the participants are people of color. We have 
a third of the businesses are first generation immigrants. Okay. Um, uh, I think it's something Did you like say a third. A third. Holy yeah. Cow. I know. I know. So we have many different people that um, are non English speakers or sure. English is you know their second. We have one person in our program who speaks seven languages. It's pretty pretty cool. So, wow. Yeah. Um, so yeah. I it's, suddenly it's, feel dumb. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I hear you. I, I I'm in the same boat. So um, so anyway, it's it's a it's a really fabulous group. Um, and uh, yeah, so you know we've been we've been at it now for a year. Okay. And it's been really cool just to see people making progress. Sure. Um, you know, just incrementally, just making you know really smart choices and, mm-hmm. and just seeing that lead to the next thing, lead to the next thing. Sure. So. Um, for instance, I, I mentioned, um, the, the Tibetan uh, mm-hmm. business that, so, uh, little Tibet, mm-hmm. they have a food cart, started out with a food cart on library mall and mm-hmm. they had one food cart. They're growing a lot of their food, um, in Verona at the Farley center. And, okay. um, so had a really good thing going. Um, and over the course of the last year, they, um, they were making all of their dumplings. Their mm-hmm. dumplings uh, are called momos. Okay. And they were making them all by hand, which is, which is great. That's sort of the traditional way to do it. Sure. But it's pretty hard to make thousands and thousands. You can't it's, scale by hand. Right? Exactly. And so they, um, you know, they, they purchased a momo making machine that really helped them scale up their production. Okay. Um, they were able to start up a second food cart. And now um, they just bought uh, a freezer so that they're able to, you know, both produce but also store some of that product. Oh, interesting. And uh, they were able to do Taste of Madison for the first time this year. Okay. They were doing um, Bike the Barns, which is another big event. They're just able to do these larger, larger events mm-hmm. and really start to, to get out there. And, sure. Um, so it's it's pretty exciting just to see them, you know, one smart choice after the next really mm-hmm. just kind of moving them forward. Sure. So That's awesome. Yeah. So were they... Were they an existing business when they came into Market Ready? They were, okay. yeah. So they've been around for a couple of years when they started the program. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, they've been really, you know, moving forward. It's Very been, cool. Been pretty cool. So, so let's talk about some of the businesses that that didn't or maybe still do not necessarily exist in total fruition. I sure. Guess. Yeah. Yeah. Can you talk about some of those and how they applied and how they came about and what kind of progress they are making? Oh, for sure. Yeah. So, let's see. Um, trying to think of somebody who's like brand new brand new mm-hmm. a lot of people were sort of in the early days okay um i can talk about somebody who's kind of an a sort of scale the next person is somebody who was like making some small sales and, okay and is now getting to the sort of next place so sure. not necessarily um, profitable but they're making sales kind of yeah thing? yeah exactly okay. yeah so um fair okay there's a business that is a soap making company okay and uh, it's called Perfect Imperfections. Okay. And she makes just amazing, um, amazing product. So she was really inspired by uh, just, you know, making making a product that is uh, healthy, that doesn't have any sort of fillers that could potentially cause health issues for folks. And oh, so, sure. Um, and she was, she's been doing a lot of just, you know, person-to-person sales it at you know craft shows and things of that sure and it's been going really well okay um she's got another another job on the side Mm -hmm. and um she's been able to start to explore relationships with um with hotels um like sort of boutique hotels okay and which is allowing her to kind of take that next step in terms of scaling scaling her production you're talking about supplying soaps and stuff like that for people to stay there okay so instead of the generic dial or whatever they got in there exactly it could be something more nice <laughs> exactly and it's kind of reflective of all right yeah like you know uh something that's special something sure. that's from madison that, mm-hmm. that sort of reflective of, of who we are here sure so um and so she's exploring those relationships and kind of taking it to the next step in, in that interesting. way so, okay yeah and then we have people that are brand brand new um we have some people that are you know starting to you know get their llc starting mm-hmm. to set up a website sure and um you know just do some of those those early days steps kind of mm-hmm. writing a business plan getting Thinking through, um, uh, you know, one thing that we've had a really great success with, we've had a relationship with one of the public libraries. Oh, nice. That it, they actually have a, a kitchen that they can use for sort of doing cooking classes and whatnot. Oh. And so they have actually had a budget to, mm-hmm. to pay vendors to come teach a class, but it's a great opportunity because you're able to essentially get feedback on your product as you're wow. developing your recipes. All right. And, uh, and you know, do it. it, it so it, that's been really fabulous for a few of our businesses that are just getting going, just sure. kind of starting out their recipes. And so 
I told it up the other day, and I think we've taught 34 cooking classes there. Have you and, really? Yeah, and 14 different businesses have, have taught. So You're talking over the course of a year. About not even a year, actually. So, so. that's essentially one a week. Yeah, or maybe yeah, it's been it's one been every old. week and a half, something like that. Yeah. Wow, yeah, that's super so, cool. Yeah, it, sometimes it's sometimes it's multiple a week. Okay. So, yeah, it's pretty fun. That's the interesting the Meadow Ridge Public Library over okay. there in sort of southwest uh, Madison. So, interesting. Yeah. So the feedback that people are getting is it generally good, or are they having to tweak their recipes and stuff like that, or yeah, maybe you don't even find out about stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, no, I I mean I think that it's I've heard from a few people that this is like. One, it's awesome to get paid to, mm-hmm. to get product feedback. Yeah, that's um, win-win-win. I know, and, and it's great for the library because they're getting really sort of culturally appropriate mm-hmm. uh, you know, business classes. Sure. You know? And and so um, you know, classes being taught in multiple languages and, mm-hmm. and so on. And um, But, yeah, it gives it gives this feedback on a product where you can tweak those recipes before sure. you start to scale it up and you know do a catering gig or, or whatever else. Interesting. So, Huh. Yeah, yeah. And we have other people that are, you know, taking the next step in terms of starting to do their first couple of catering jobs, too. Okay. Um, we're really encouraging the business owners not to wait to when the market opens. Sure. You know, to really just get out there, start mm-hmm. figuring that, things out, because uh, you don't want your first day in the market to be your first day. Uh, no. You know, that's pretty <laughs> overwhelming, Goodness, you know? No. So you want to figure out your systems, you know, mm-hmm. hire your cousin. Realize maybe your cousin's not the best employee. Right. Hire your other cousin. Maybe mm-hmm. that other cousin's better employee. <laughs> so, because realistically, the the businesses that are going to be part of Market Ready, they're going to have to pay rent essentially, just like they would have to pay rent somewhere else. Exactly. It's not like that's subsidized or anything like that. Right. So right. you're helping them build their business to a point, but eventually they have to learn how to make money on their own. Exactly. That's what it yep. comes down to. Yeah. This is. I mean, this is definitely teaching people. You know, th- this is not uh, like giving giving anybody a handout. This is sure. definitely supporting people. And supporting each other, and that's mm-hmm. that's kind of the model we've been taking. Is like, you know, we're essentially facilitating connections. Mm-hmm. There's already just a huge wealth of knowledge between these business owners, you know. Oh, um, sure. And so a lot of what we do is just get these business owners together, mm-hmm. and uh, you know, one person will be thinking through, you know, I'm, I'm looking into bottling for my for my sauce. Sure. Has anybody done that before? And somebody's like, Yeah, I did that, and um, you know, this thing didn't work, but this thing did. Sure. And that's you know i don't have experience with bottling stuff i no, I, I don't have experience either. with everything right <laughs> i also don't have experience being like a, a business owner as a new immigrant of color okay. like it, you know i so i can only speak from so many perspectives sure um and so by facilitating these connections between people mm-hmm. it it really taps into that that sort of that wisdom of the of the community of support and mm-hmm. and that's that's what we're hoping for this market too is that you know, uh, somebody's going to come to the market because they like that one business, but then mm-hmm. they're going to buy from two other businesses. Right. And so uh, a strong market overall is going to make for everybody's business. Right. It's going to thrive. And, becomes and more of a destination. Exactly. And mm-hmm. so really trying to, you know, yes, we're all individual business owners, but we're also a business community and wanting mm-hmm. to encourage that right from the get-go is this mm-hmm. like um, – Sort of mutual mutual aid, mutual support for one another because sure. as a as a group, you can't just have a market with like three good businesses and the rest <laughs> is just kind of tanking out, right. you know? Um, right. So Maybe that would be malls now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. So interesting. So I wonder uh, the market the market itself will will open in a couple of years. Twenty right? twenty. Twenty twenty. Yep. Give or take. Yep. What has to happen between now and then for it to actually? Go, get started lots of things lots of things There's a lot of moving pieces and um and that's why we're grateful to be working with the city on this and mm-hmm. um and a lot of people you know a lot of community members are involved so one thing that's happening right now is that there's a fundraising campaign so oh, okay um so the city is putting in about half actually a little over half okay of the funds to it's about 15 million dollars to, okay. to build out this space that's a so, healthy nut okay no kidding right um so the the city's putting in over half then we're looking to get what's called a new market tax credit, which is a federal federal grant for, uh, for specifically for these markets. You know, it's uh, it's it's just for real estate development that okay. essentially gives um, gives people an option to to essentially put their tax tax dollars towards this. And so okay. for like larger corporations that have big tax liabilities, mm-hmm. they can essentially allocate. Uh-huh. So okay, yeah, and then and then we're doing some fundraising from. You know, city, city, and also just the broader community mm-hmm. to, uh, 
you know, to engage people in this process and, and sure. really make it a, a community project. And so um, we've raised, I think, a little over a million dollars so far oh, wow. out of, I think, four million. So we're, okay. we're getting there. Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, we have some like some larger donors that have been announced, but this is also one of those things where, uh, you know, $20 helps. Um, okay. and, and so it's it's that's one thing that's going on right now. Another thing is the whole like construction process, you know, mm-hmm. getting finishing the construction designs. Um, we've done some you know, architectural plans that are at the sort of high level. Sure. Next is getting down to the brass tacks, like, you know, designing the actual space. Sure. Like doing the HVAC, doing all that gotcha. kind of stuff. Let's getting get all the blueprints in place. Exactly. Okay. And then, you know, putting that out to bid, mm-hmm. getting a construction contractor, mm-hmm. getting, you know, and then putting shovels in the ground. Sure. So, uh, so that's going on. Um, and then there's the whole sort of like governance part of it too, of like, what a What's the, what are the rules like how are you know what are hours of operation um sure. how much does rent cost mm-hmm. how big are the stall spaces um and so that those details are getting worked out right now too so we've gotcha. got a really amazing team uh, working on this we've got you know uh yeah people at the city we've also got a lot of community members involved mm-hmm. um there's the the foundation which is the Madison public market foundation they're okay. the ones that are kind of they're both doing the the fundraising and also are going to be the sort of operating uh-huh. entity. They're going to okay. kind of operate the market. Sure. So, so that's yeah. There's a lot of moving pieces. <laughs> so the Northside Planning Council is the one that put together the market ready program, which you are a part, Correct. part of. Correct. Correct. The City of Madison and the foundation. It sounds like is putting the market itself together. Yep. How did the Northside Planning Council get involved in getting participants ready for the market? Was it strictly through Feed Kitchen kind of thing, or was it? I guess what's the what's the goal there for the Northside Planning Council? Yeah, well, I mean, it's uh, it's one of those things where you know we've got the feed kitchen going, mm-hmm. um, and we re- we see this uh, this market as really supporting the feed kitchen. The feed kitchen is supporting the market. I mean, hugely. Um, you know, th- and there are some other great projects that are happening right now too. You know, you've got Oscar Meyer, like who you know that that has a huge potential for mm-hmm. being a, a production space for for mm-hmm. food as that gets reimagined. Sure, you've got the Garver Feed Mill that's up there. That's mm-hmm. kind of another production space. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it's it's something that we're really seeing the seeing these connections between all these different projects that are happening. Um, so I think the the Feed Kitchen sees this as like a you know a great opportunity for for vendors who are in the market to be able to sure. be supported by the feed kitchen and, mm-hmm. and vice versa. Gotcha. So, yeah. So if you don't mind me asking, how is the market ready program funded? Yeah. Yeah. So we have a quarter of a million dollars okay. from the city of Madison. Okay. So, um, so yeah, $250,000. And so at first that sounds like a lot of money, but then I think 30 businesses and all the, the stuff that <laughs> all the stuff that you provide them like maybe that's not that much money yeah and that's for two years of program delivery okay and um about 150 thousand okay. is direct grants gotcha to okay. the businesses so um oh to the the participants directly themselves. to the participants oh, yeah interesting. so okay um so 15 businesses have received two thousand five hundred dollars okay and then at the end of the program um and th- those grants were to um you know, to build, you know, buy some machinery or mm-hmm. buy, uh, you know, prototype packaging or mm-hmm. things like that. Mm-hmm. Um, and then at the end of the program, there are going to be five grants for $19,000 that help people build out their stall. Wow. So that's, okay. you know, sort of a boost to actually, you know, you know, get some countertops, get some, sure. you know, kitchen prep space, all that kind of stuff. Build so. out the stall within the market itself. Correct. Okay. So they have to be accepted in there. Right. Okay. Right. But then $19,000, that's... That's some nice countertops. Oh my goodness, right? Yeah, I mean, but yeah, it's. Uh, I mean, realistically, it's, it's it's a decent amount of money. But when you're starting a business, I was just going over a plan today, and they were talking like a hundred fifty thousand dollar loan, and we're going through the payments for that over the course of whatever they set it up for five year, ten year, whatever. And like you have to calculate that expense, right? It's not like they just give you that one hundred fifty thousand dollars, right? Absolutely. And so it's interesting. Like, are you sure you need this one hundred fifty grand? Maybe we can find a way to whittle that down to whatever, because in the end, those payments are taken away from any profit that you're taking home, right? Absolutely. So it's interesting. I always joke with people my perception since I started my business of ten thousand dollars versus before I started my business. It's night and day. I know. It's you, so true. You're watching Wheel of Fortune and someone get that little $5,000 silver glittery thing and they're like, oh, $5,000, yay. 
And <laughs> me with my business, I'm like, oh, well, that would pay for this little tiny thing. Completely. And I still have 20 other little tiny things that we have to pay for. Absolutely. Where when you're one person, whatever, like, oh, okay, they'll pay my mortgage for a few months. That's all good. Right. Yeah. Hey, so it's interesting, the perspective on the dollars. So true. Because so true. the dollars just keep multiplying, right? In well, expenses and revenue and all that jazz. So Absolutely. It's interesting. Absolutely. That's super cool. Yeah. So tell me about the, the timeline for the Market Ready program. Will you guys be there or will you continue on after the market goes up? That's the hope. Okay. You know, um, we've had some great success with this program. You know, okay. uh, it's it's really going well. Uh, you know, people are hiring employees, you know, mm-hmm. in the first six months, um, we had 19 employees added. Did you uh, really? Yeah, just across the 30 businesses. Oh, so, that's fantastic. Um, and yeah, no things things are things are going well. So we're we're happy to happy to see that, and, and would love to see this continue on sure. after the market opens. You know, really to mm-hmm. sort of bake into that into that market. Um, you know, support for new entrepreneurs. Sure. So yeah. So and we're you know working on working on sort of the details of that because that's mm-hmm. still a couple of years down the road. But, sure. Um, but that's that's the plan and the okay. hope. Okay. So interesting. So tell me, how did you get involved with this? Yeah. So my my background is in sort of community development and food. And also I've worked a lot with diverse communities. So, OK. Um, and I, I grew up in Madison. Um, OK. And then I my, my mom's from Toronto in Canada. And oh, so really? I, okay. I, I went to I went to undergrad there um, and then I, I worked for a nonprofit after that, doing a lot of food, food systems work with new immigrant communities. Um, OK. Community gardens and markets and compost in, com- in Toronto. Toronto, okay. Yeah, and then I lived in Nicaragua for a while doing similar work, and then I moved back here about seven years ago. I started okay. up a, a farm business right after I moved back. You um, started a business? I did, yeah. Okay. Yeah, and then, uh, and then yeah, just kind of ran that for a while, and then, um, and then I, I did a, a master's in urban planning and really focused on sort of community development and sure. food system type stuff again. And okay, and midway through that program. I, you know, I've been really interested in the market for a long time mm-hmm. and, uh, and this job came up and so I, I started, started work, I guess it was February of 17. So okay. I've been doing it, doing it for a little while now. Sure. So, yeah. So tell me the business that you started, is that still around? It is. I, I've sort of scaled it back cause I have two jobs. And okay. so, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, so right at this point it's mostly, um, so the, the business is, uh, I was doing uh, vegetables, like mm-hmm. CSA vegetables, organic vegetable production. Okay. And now I've shifted over towards uh, uh, perennial fruit. So okay. I'm growing, um, you know, a lot of a lot of fruit that we've heard of, most people have heard of, like apples and cherries sure. and, and grapes and whatnot. Um, but also some like sort of rare fruit as well, like uh, currants and quince and papa and uh, honeyberry huh. and service berry and stuff like that. So I had no idea that you could grow stuff like that in Wisconsin. I know. It's kind of fun. <laughs> so at this point, I... Uh, I'm mostly doing it to uh, mostly growing for for friends and family. Sure. Um, so it's kind of scaled scaled back to the sort of selling part of things. Okay. So interesting. Yeah. Yeah. All right. But I've learned a lot from that process. Um, for a while there, um, I was the uh sort of the manager of a marketing cooperative as mm-hmm. well that's based out of the the Farley Center, which is where okay. I grow. And sure. So yeah, it just gave some good good background on mm-hmm. on on that sort of thing. Interesting. So you must have seen, well, I guess, through the Market Ready program, you've seen a lot of businesses. And I imagine before that you've seen a lot of businesses. What are some of the things that you can warn people about that you've seen people maybe brutally fail on? Sure. Um, yeah, well, I think it's always a good idea to uh, start start small and build incrementally. You know, mm-hmm. you don't want to go all in. I mean, go all in in terms of like committing to the business. Mm-hmm. But don't put all your eggs in one basket in sure. terms of like, you know, start for, you know, for the example of what we've been doing with the market ready folks, start by doing a cooking class at the library, mm-hmm. get some feedback, mm-hmm. then do a catering job. Great. Mm-hmm. Then scale up and start to offer, you know, just scale gotcha. little by little. Sure. And because it gives you feedback, you know, mm-hmm. and it's, it's less risk if you're doing it incrementally like that rather than just going sure. all in, that going hard sense. right off the bat and realizing you're just, you know. Sure two degrees off from from where you should be sure but that's a, a lot that's a big deal when you're going like way off in right, right, right so let's buy a two-story restaurant down the square and hope people like our food <laughs> exactly exactly so that's that's one thing um yeah other i'd say don't get too lost in the details start okay. you know I'd, mm-hmm. I'd say like write a business plan absolutely but 
you can write a business plan that gets you started Mm -hmm. and then uh then keep after it you know Mm -hmm. a business plan is never done you get down to the last page and you start back up at the top again that's right (laughs) totally right and uh don't let that be a barrier to just getting out there and starting Mm -hmm. to starting to get some feedback because that that's the thing that that's really going to give you content to put sure. into that business if you're just stuck in your head thinking you've got to get the perfect details perfect mm-hmm. numbers you're gonna you need you need a, a combination of sitting back and, and reflecting mm-hmm. and also and also getting out there and and you know getting some feedback from the world sure so yeah i can totally appreciate that i'm on uh i guess i'm two days away from the graduating class of this business planning class that i'm nice, teaching yeah and it's interesting talking to people that have put together their business plan and they're realizing in the 11th hour essentially for when the business plan is due so to speak in this class that oh we want to change directions or oh we're gonna we're not gonna get this food cart thing we're just gonna do catering whatever to start which is totally fine mm-hmm. and i'm like realistically for the class the class itself whatever in regards like turn in a plan but you don't just because this is the plan you turned in doesn't mean that this is the business that you necessarily have to start. Completely. Especially if in your plan you can say like, well, we're not making that much money if we follow through with this. Yeah. So it's interesting trying to convince people like you don't necessarily have to do this. You can tweak your plan. Once you do your plan, like you said, start at the top and let's work our way down again. Make sure it makes sense. Completely. So it's. And so I, interesting. And I'd say the flip side is don't don't just jump in there and start doing things without a little bit of a plan too. Right. You, you need something written down. You mm-hmm. need something that is guiding you because business ownership is there are so many moving pieces. Oh yeah. You need to have something that's gonna sort of uh help you figure out, okay, like you're not having to make make decisions all the time. You mm-hmm. need to have some things where it's like this is something that I've I'm I'm I've committed to at least for now and this mm-hmm. is gonna kinda keep me moving forward sure rather than always going back and trying to you know start from scratch always right. always always yeah i see people that have this vision in their head about how much money they're going to make say or how many widgets they're going to sell or something like that and then they have another part in their head about how much those widgets are going to cost or what their customers are going to look like and they don't ever actually put those on paper and do some calculations when they finally do for the business plan they can see that they don't line up yeah and then they got a little bit of a problem and i said this is a great problem to have yeah. Because just imagine if you didn't have this problem, you weren't even aware of it, and you went through all the motions to start your business, and now you find that you're 20,000, 10,000, 100,000, whatever in the hole, and you have no way to make up for that. Yeah. Right? Like this yeah. business, it's totally fine to say that uh, these numbers don't work in a business plan. Absolutely. Just figure it out. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's sort of like, um, you know, believing in yourself. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. But also having the like, in, in fact, it's actually kind of a confidence as well to like to know that, all right, if this isn't the right path, like not feeling so attached right. mm-hmm. to that as the thing yes. that like you can't be like, all right, you know what? What I'm what I'm hearing is maybe I need to let off the gas and actually take a different direction on mm-hmm. this because um, just barreling ahead despite <laughs> despite <laughs> right. what people are telling you is that's that's a good way to get twenty twenty thousand dollars in the mm-hmm. hole. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so <laughs> I always joke about somebody like, I got this great idea, right? Pagers. We need more pagers. <laughs> Just push that business. Yeah, completely. It'll be the greatest. Right? <laughs> we'll spend tons of money on marketing and see what happens. <laughs> completely. Oh, that's funny. So in regards to the market ready program, um, how can people help? Yeah, great. Well, um, like I mentioned, you know, this is very much, you know, a community effort. You know, mm-hmm. this is something that is much more than that one particular neighborhood, much more than the city of Madison. This is like, you know, we're we're wanting this to engage sure. everybody. Mm-hmm. And so there's that fundraising campaign. That's that's one way that people can, can help out. Is there a um, website or something like that? Or? Yes. So Or they just mail check to me, that's cool too. <laughs> so yeah, if you if you Google Madison Public Market, mm-hmm. that will come up with the Madison Public Market's website where there's information about gotcha. about okay. uh, sort of the funding funding part of things. Awesome. And okay. That would be a huge way to help out. Um, mm-hmm. You know, unless we actually have a space for the businesses to operate in, mm-hmm. it's um, that's that's a we we need that. That's we need, the we thing? need a space. That's um, the thing. What, is also, that the holdup? It's not necessarily the holdup. We're on we're on track in okay. terms of the fundraising process, but it's you know we're. Uh, the it's a cog in one of the gears kind exactly of okay exactly so that's one way people can support um you know we also we offer we do classes we mm-hmm. do um uh business coaching and things like that so if people are interested in that that might be another mm-hmm. way for people to plug in as sure. well. sure so, so just to clarify for the other listeners are you 
bringing in any more businesses into the Market Ready program at this point? At this point, no. Okay. Uh, we hope to do another cohort sometime soon. Um, okay. But at this point, we're not. We're not gotcha. looking for folks. But if people are interested, um, you know, if you hear this program and you are – uh, a business owner or, you know, uh, aspiring business owner mm -hmm. um, and uh, you're interested in the program, feel free to visit marketreadymadison.org. Gotcha. And we have a spot where you can actually apply and we're still collecting applications. Oh, nice. um, so and essentially just we're holding on to that list. And then when we do the next cohort, then we'll, mm -hmm. we'll get in touch with, okay. with folks. So, sure. And we offer, you know, um, like I've said, this is very this is very much a multicultural thing so we we offer all of our programming in in spanish um and uh and also yeah we're so it's it's something that you don't necessarily have to be a, a english speaker to participate in the program gotcha so, okay yeah it's always interesting i've interviewed quite a few people in the chair that you're sitting in here and it's interesting to hear the challenges that people are overcoming just lifestyle challenges right whether it's a new baby new marriage whatever Right. Now that I think of like, oh, you're an immigrant who doesn't know his English Completely. and you're starting a business. Holy cow. Oh, it's so true. It's right? so true. I think of all the people that, that I talk to that are complaining about the challenges that they have when they're going into business. When they they know the native language, I know. they have contacts, they've been around here, they have all this help, right? But they're like, oh my gosh, I have all these excuses, right? I know. Are you yeah. sure? I am so inspired by mm -hmm. the business owners that are in this program, just the way that they are able to uh, work their tails off, mm -hmm. work together, um, sure. and really, you know, despite all odds, mm -hmm. do incredibly well. Yeah. Um, the That one business that I was mentioning, uh, Sabor de Puebla, mm -hmm. um, they produce 10,000 tamales a week. 10,000. You know, it's just amazing. <laughs> and, and, uh, have a really successful restaurant right by mm -hmm. East High School. Okay. Um, and uh, yeah, it's it's amazing how how uh, just how successful people are. Sure. So that's awesome. Yeah. So what have been some of the other success stories that you see, or that you have seen through the Market Ready program? Well, I guess maybe I should ask: Is do people graduate from the Market Ready program, or do they ever leave the Market Ready program, or something like that? When the market opens, you know, that's that will be sort of the moment. Okay. You know, um, spread where your wings, butterfly. <laughs> exactly, exactly, and and we plan to you know stay stay connected. Sure. Um, but uh, that'll be sort of the moment where we sort of shift shift gears, shift energy. Okay. And probably, um, you know, that's still yet to be determined because that's mm -hmm. a little bit down the road sure but uh we'll probably shift our shift our focus less from that sort of preparation mm -hmm. and more in the sort of support f in the market itself sure you know um okay. but yeah i mean uh, like i mentioned it's it's one of those things where uh it's just all these incremental mm -hmm. steps in the in the progress you sure. know um yeah, so artisan fruit, who you who you know. Oh, sure, um, yeah. So they have done just some great work around their packaging. You know, mm -hmm. um, went from having a, a base. So to to give your your listeners some some background. So mm -hmm. artisan fruit has this amazing product. They um, they carve watermelon mm -hmm. into uh, into a rose or into uh, you know they do these beautiful carvings. Yeah, it becomes these a center centerpieces. You know, mm -hmm. and so if you're having a uh, you know, an event, mm -hmm. um, or if you, you know, want to give a gift to, mm -hmm. a, like a, a family or a friend, um, this is just a fabulous way to do that. Sure. So, um, and it's pretty cool cause, uh, it's a Sun Prairie based business. Um, mm -hmm. so, uh, Edder, Edder and his family live, live in Sun Prairie. And sure. so, um, you can look them up, uh, artisan fruit and they have just fabulous stuff. So, mm -hmm. um, but anyway, yeah, you know, behind the scenes, like he's been doing some really great work on, um, on packaging, you mm -hmm. know, so, uh, rather than having, um, you know, a glass space mm -hmm. that cost a, a fair amount of money mm -hmm. and was kind of tippy mm -hmm. and didn't have any branding on it. Now sure. he's developed, he sort of prototyped this base that actually has his logo on it. So somebody sa sees it and is like, oh, wow, that's that's amazing. I've right. never seen anything like that. I want one of those. Exactly. They're going to be like, oh, artisan fruit. I'm mm -hmm. going to Google that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, sure. Um, and it's also brought down the per unit cost sure. drastically. It's like mm -hmm. something like three dollars less per unit sure cost. that's so, fantastic fabulous you know so mm -hmm. that's that's just profit right there mm -hmm. um and uh so yeah he's just he's got a really good head on his shoulders in terms of just like making making really smart business choices right. and just making these these incremental steps and mm -hmm. um so yeah i mean it's 
none of it's like super glamorous, right? But it's just all this like little progress where it's like, wow, wow, you've you've just really made some some smart choices, smart investments of your time and your mm-hmm. money, and just like, wow, you're you're just you're getting there, you know? And, yeah. And it's um yeah, I, I just I feel really humbled by it. just like <laughs> sure how how hard people are working. Most of the time, most people have you know full time job mm-hmm. and kids, and then they're hustling on the side to, to do this business pretty much full time as well. So well, sure. It's, they got to support themselves and pay their mortgage, whatever, while they're starting this business, which that alone can be a challenge. Completely. And now you have something that you're trying to build with a somewhat of a timeline involved in there. Yep. And you want to, I know that some of the people that I've worked with and talked to, they were doing stuff that was good, but essentially when I say good, I mean in the production of what they're doing, it was working for them at the current rate that they were making their, their widgets or their sauce, whatever, but it couldn't scale. And for them not to scale, it was either they either maintain the pace that they're going, which is crazy cycle pace for the, the money that they're making, or they have to find different ways to, to scale to make more money so that they can not die <laughs> leaning over a saucepan kind of thing. Completely. So Absolutely. it's interesting talking with people like that and seeing what they can do and watching them learn how to scale is fantastic. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. And just seeing people find really cool niches too, you know? Oh, sure. Um, so like... Uh, Ugly Apple is mm-hmm. another one of our businesses, and uh, the business owner she, what she focuses on is is ugly apples. Mm-hmm. So things that you know a carrot that is kind of wiggly, sure, you know, or something that's just not something you're gonna see in a grocery store, but mm-hmm. is perfectly good, you know. Sure. Um. So she focuses on seconds, like uh, sort of product that doesn't look great, but it's sure perfectly good. So aesthetically so, imperfect stuff. Exactly. <laughs> so she's she has a food cart mm-hmm. that um she mostly focuses on breakfast, mm-hmm. and um that that also is a niche that is oh, not filled, not filled by a lot yeah. of a lot of food carts. Mm-hmm. So most everybody does, you know, lunch, dinner sort mm-hmm. of type stuff, mm-hmm. but. Um, something that she's realized is, you know, an option is, is fruit leather. So like dried fruit. So, okay. so, um, rather than most everybody cans stuff around here right? Sure. and canning is kind of a pain in the butt. It's, is it really? It, okay. It, it I've never a, done it. So. It takes a lot, a lot of time okay. and the cans themselves, like the glass is pretty expensive. Sure. Um, so what she's doing is, um, creating a local fruit leather. So, oh. um, and so she is, uh, you know, taking fruit and vegetables from around here, mm-hmm. turning it into this really tasty product um, okay. that she's hoping to sort of really scale up and get in grocery stores and really sure. get out there as, as, a, as a product. And oh, so, interesting. So she's right now in the, in the process of, you know, developing her recipes and mm-hmm. developing that scale so mm-hmm. that she can, she can really take that out there. So, so you're talking about something on top of her food cart. Exactly. In addition to, okay. Exactly, yeah. So, so she's planning to, you know, continue to run the food cart. Mm-hmm. Um, and in fact, she's at the point where she has an employee that can run the food cart while she can put a little bit of time oh, towards very cool. this product development and kind of sure. product expansion. So, yeah. Clever. Yeah, yeah. So that's, you know, it's exciting. It's exciting to, to see see these things unfolding. Yeah, it's interesting to see that the Market Ready program can help people. And the Market Ready program isn't necessarily the ones doing the work. They're the ones that are helping guide yeah. something like this and initiating maybe some innovation or, or maybe just even offering a, a boot to the butt <laughs> help them take the initiative on some ideas that they already had absolutely right that's fantastic absolutely. yeah so if you were to give some advice for people that are in the market ready program assuming that they're going to be listening to this <laughs> what would you say to them gosh i'd say just keep up the good work i like i said i um you know i think people are just really really working hard and mm-hmm. and um i would say that the the main thing that we've been telling folks is like just start now you know sure. don't don't wait for the market to open mm-hmm. just just get going um start sure. start getting out there start getting feedback mm-hmm. start developing your systems you know okay. figuring out how am i gonna how am i gonna do my accounting how am mm-hmm. i gonna do um you know for the newer businesses things like that accounting and and who am i gonna hire all that kind of stuff sure down down the road for the more experienced businesses it's thinking about what are what are my new products like this fruit sure. what am i and you know starting to think in terms of what's the next step mm-hmm. and so i'd say yeah just like just keep after it. Get get in there, and and um, when the market opens, awesome. Mm-hmm. But uh, get going now, and and your uh, that track record sure. of having really you know laid in laid in a lot of a lot mm-hmm. of sales, a lot of production, all these things mm-hmm. that's gonna serve you really well. Sure. So that leads me to 
what will it take for the market ready participants to become part of the market? Because it's not a guarantee. That's not a shoe in or anything. They still have to apply and go through whatever hurdles. Mm -hmm. What are those hurdles? Right. So the uh, the foundation that I talked about, they're going to mm -hmm. be the, the group that actually operates the market. Okay. So they're going to be the ones that uh, that decide who gets in and, and who okay. doesn't. But the the vendors um, will help help sort of craft some of the 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 process for choosing those those folks. Gotcha. Okay, so it's not necessarily set in stone yet. Exactly. That's still in the process. So that, that process of how vendors will be selected is that's something that will uh, will be crafted in conversation with not only the market ready vendors, but mm -hmm. so that's thirty vendors. We also have um, a lot of very uh, like existing businesses mm -hmm. in Dane County well, sure. that. Um, have also applied to be in the market. So mm -hmm. we, I think it's something like 180 other businesses have applied to be in the market. So well, how many so, spots do you have? Well, um, ballpark. Yeah. I so suppose there's a range there. So more than two, less than a million. Right. Right. <laughs> so it's going to be probably between 30 and 40 spaces. In the oh, market. that's smaller than I anticipated. Okay. Yeah. So it's 30 and 40 like permanent spaces. Mm -hmm. But each one of those business, you can imagine, you know, a farm business maybe only wants to be there for the growing season. Sure. And then you could have a craft vendor there during the during the holiday time. Oh, so, gotcha. Okay. So in, in one of those spaces, you may actually have, you know, three businesses over the mm -hmm. course of one year in one space. Gotcha. Um, and then over the course of one day, you may have, you know, uh, like a holiday craft fair mm -hmm. in the evening. But in the, earlier in the day, maybe like you know, there's gonna be multiple things happening in one space. So sure. even though it's only thirty to forty spaces, sure, you could end up having you know a couple hundred businesses okay. actually in the space over the course of the year sure. between pop up events, um, mm -hmm. more seasonal renters, and also those permanent permanent sure. spaces. So interesting. Yeah, okay. yeah. So it's 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 one of those things where it sounds like there's gonna be uh, like just intense competition for that sure. for those very small spots, but. Uh, because, because, you know, there are going to be a lot of people in the space that mm -hmm. are there, there's going to be opportunities for people. And also, like I said, this is just the first building. We're hoping to continue to expand this, this broader district sure. that could accommodate a lot, sure. of, a lot of more people. Interesting. So, yeah. So tell me, is the idea to make, I'm trying to think how I want to word this, um, with the multiple buildings, if someone, did someone have to have a store so, or a retail spot in order to use the the shipping and all that jazz that you may no. have in the building? Yeah, not necessarily. Okay. And and that um, that is sort of down the road a little bit in terms of, like, we haven't really gotten to the the vision for that, that sure. secondary space yet. Okay. But, um, but yeah, I, I think that you could definitely have a business that was just using that as a production space or just shipping space sure. that didn't have a retail space in the, in the okay. market itself. Interesting. Yeah. All right. All right. I see. This seems like a cool place. I'm yeah. excited for this. Yeah, I'm excited too. A couple of years is a long time to wait, realistically, but given the given the scale of what's happening, I guess it has to be. Yep. And a, and a lot a lots uh, happening right now, and there's a lot that's you know it's it's not like we're just gonna be sitting and waiting for it. Sure. There's a lot of opportunities for community members to engage in the process mm -hmm. and for the vendors to really like just dive in and, sure. and get things moving. So. Sure. It'd be one thing if we're just kind of sitting, sitting passively, <laughs> wait. passively waiting for the doors to open, but there's there's, 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 there's work to be done. <laughs> so, what's the future for you in regards to the market? How do you see that panning out? Yeah, I mean, I I, I really love the market. You know, it's something that um, I grew up in Madison, like I said, and mm -hmm. um, I think my I, my greatest hope for the market is that it can be a space that is, you know, uh, that. Mad Madisonians from a lot of different walks of life mm -hmm. um, can interact and uh, just build relationships. You know, mm -hmm. um, I think of some of the the really amazing places in Madison. Like, I feel like our public libraries are are great places for Fantastic. people from a lot of different walks of life to, to mm -hmm. interact with one another. Mm -hmm. You know, we've got uh, Dane dances is mm -hmm. so great. You know, mm -hmm. it's it's something that um, just. Uh, people from a lot of different cultural backgrounds feel comfortable in that space sure. and can interact. And my hope is that this market can be a similar space where people can, uh, you know, build relationships and just, just hang out together. Sure. You know? Um, and, uh, so that's, that's my hope for the market. And I, I would love to continue to be a part of that process once it opens, awesome. um, whether that means being, you know, uh, sort of, you know, market ready version 2.0 whatever sure. that looks like or whether mm -hmm. it's uh working for the market or you know what, whatever it might be sure um, i i am I'm a big supporter would love to continue to be involved nice so. that's awesome have there been is anybody against the market 
Well, you know, there's been some resistance at times. Is it really? Um, from, uh, from politicians sometimes just not like feeling like, uh, you know, not seeing the value in this, okay. thinking that it maybe only serves like one part of the city uh, rather gotcha. than serving okay. the, like the whole region. Sure. Um, but I think we've done a good job of making the case that this is something that is, uh, it has regional economic impact. You know, sure. This is creating a ton of jobs, you know, oh, it's, it's huge. And it's, it's something that's really worth investing in. It's mm-hmm. something that it's one of those things you, you put in a dollar and you get out a couple or at least a couple, you know, this I'll is something that, that yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, so it's, um, this is something that's really, it's, it's good. It's good for Dane County. It's good sure. for our state. And so, um, there's been, yeah, there's been some resistance every once in a while, but I think the vast majority of people who hear about the market are like, wow, yeah, sure. I've, you know, I've, I've visited a market in, in Mexico. I visited a market in, in Philadelphia. Like mm-hmm. that's like, I'd, I'd love to have one. No, of those if in, you've in ever town, seen you know? one, I think that would be enough to convince people. Yeah, that they're, right. That they're an awesome thing because so, yeah, they're a lot of fun. Yeah, and it's a it's super cool way for the community to come together and see all just be exposed to so much different stuff. Completely. And in the end, it's a lot of good food, and who doesn't love good food? Absolutely. So absolutely awesome, Ian. I appreciate you stopping by. This yeah, has been great. So much. We learned a lot here. This has been Authentic Business Adventures, the business program that brings you the struggle stories and triumphant successes of business owners across the land, coming to you from the Sun Prairie Community Studios, underwritten by Bank of Sun Prairie. My name is James Kiedemann, business coach at Draw In Customers Business Coaching, co-owner of Calls on Call, and author of the Bold Business Book, available on Amazon. We'd like to thank you, our wonderful listeners, and our guest, Ian Ailey, coordinator of the Market Ready Program. Find us airing on 103.5 Wednesdays at 1 p.m. as well as Sundays at 2 p.m. and at sunpraymediacenter.com. Past episodes can be found morning, noon, and night at the podcast link on drawincustomers.com. Thank you for listening. We will see you next week. And if you do nothing else, I want you to stay awesome and enjoy your business.